Ah, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time you're tuning in. Hopefully you're tuning in at the right time, at a, at a, at a point in your life where uh, you might hear something and uh, that thing may be a blessing to you. Amen. Give me one second here, guys. Let me get my, I forgot to put on my, my headphones. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, I, I pray that you would hear something in this in this teaching that would be a blessing to you, to your family, and to whomever you you encounter as you go on, as you move on in life. We are in the final part, <laughs> and I say this, ooh, I say this very openly. If I don't know. Very cautiously, I say. I, I, I think, I think we could, we, I think we might be able to close it off in this session. I think so. Um, for for all intents and purposes, I, um, we have, we have, uh, the, the 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 teaching is who is Israel, uh, and it's with Israel. Who is? Is it who is or who are? And. Um, you know, I, I in the beginning I kind of struggled with how to how to say is, should I say who is Israel or should I say who are Israel? You know, and it depends on the semantics, I guess. How are you looking at Israel? Um, and and that's the question, and we've answered that question as far as as far as this teaching was concerned. We've answered that question in I think parts parts two, three four. Um, um, and, and, and we are now digging into the answers, digging into the answer, um, from the perspective of, uh, we, we, we declare that Israel is a character, it's, it's, it's people who, who have a certain character about them, a certain perception, certain personality, if you will, certain, certain things about them that caused them to want to do, want to live righteous, want to live uprightly, not just before man, more so, but before God, even more. Uh, because somehow, somewhere, they, 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 they have this in, inner drive, inner perception that um, even if they don't believe in God, um, we have people who live, who've been who've been married for, with one wife, who've been faithful to that wife, people who live upright, um, you know, uh, following a, a, a solid moral code. Um, and, and that in itself um, lends to that person's character. And I do believe that at some point, God is going to draw that person into him. And God is not going to allow somebody who, with that kind of intent uh, with that kind of heart, that kind of, of moral compass, if you will, to to live an entire the entire lives without knowing him, without confessing him, without putting trust and belief in him, um, I I really sincerely believe that. Um, and there are people who live like that. You know, they don't they don't necessarily ascribe to to the Bible and the teachings and so on and so on, but they 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 have this this kind of a this moral compass, uh, I could describe it, as, and and they they intend to live upright uh, uh, towards their family, towards their, their their community, towards their job, the what their work or whomever. Uh, they 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 try to live this honest, upright life, um, and and some people do it with God, and some some people do it uh, unknown unknown. Uh, Without really holding God up to this, you know what I'm saying? Without, you know, lifting up God. Uh, without, you know, as, as as believers would say, blessing his name and giving him all the kudos and stuff like that. Uh, but somewhere inside, they, they're directed somehow. Um, and I believe God is in everything. God is in every single thing. Um, because the, the, the narrative teaches us that he created all things for his, for himself, for his purpose. He created everything 
you know, evil for the day of evil. You know, he created everything. He, he, there is nothing that takes place without his hand, without him being involved. Um, and so we could say that in, if you don't believe in God, if you have some semblance of belief, if you have a wholehearted belief, if you go in gung-ho for God, for, for, uh, uh, in whatever phase you are, uh, I believe that God God is involved in your life one way or the other. He either trying to get you to him or trying to get you closer to him all in one swoop, right? Get you to him and always getting you closer to him. Uh, Yeshua uses a, a parable about prune. He prunes, you know, he prunes, you know, every tree that bringeth forth fruit, he, he will prune that tree, you know, cut little branches here and there to make sure the tree keeps growing beautifully and lovely and so on and so on and so on. So, um, uh, whether you think you, you, you without him, whether you think you with him, he's, he's, he's there nonetheless. Amen. So, um, as I said, we, we have answered the question, who is Israel? And, and, and to further entrench the answer, to further solidify the answer, we've, we've, we've digging into the character, of, we've dug into the character of Jacob. We've talked extensive, extensively, extensively about Jacob. Why? Because that's who was renamed Israel. He, that's where it all stemmed from, quote unquote, right? Uh, it stemmed from him, from that person, Jacob. That's where that word uh, came out of, evolved from, if you will, um, that person. And so we dug into his character. Um, and then I said we skipped. We, we didn't get too much into Isaac. Um, and I think if you if, even if you read about Isaac and, and about his his life and his stories, you'll see the same character. Because that's what I'm saying. God chooses a certain character. Look at Noah. He chose Noah. Why? He was mad at the people. He was teed off at the people. Genesis chapter 6. He was teed off at the people. So much so that he destroyed the world as it was known then. But Noah found grace. Why did Noah find grace? Because Noah had a certain character about him. Right? that didn't lend into the character of the other people who were doing violence, who were doing wickedness, who were doing things according to how they saw it. Noah was different. And so because Noah was different, he, he, he Noah found the grace. Or oh, grace was with Noah. Or oh, grace found Noah, however you want to say it. Right? And then this is the same thing with Abraham. And that's where we left off. In part four, we left off talking about Abraham, talking about how God, God, yeah, Jehovah is saying, people, listen, Jehovah is saying to himself, should I, I should I, I want to, I want, I want to do some things, I want to do something. Should I hide what I want to do from my friend Abraham? That's, that's a tremendous, a tremendous, listen, spend, listen to that statement and, and, and soak into it for a minute. Just, just saturate yourself in that, in that statement. It's, it, it's, because when we read the narrative, if you read the complete narrative all the way in Genesis 18, that's where we're going to go in Genesis 18. When you read the complete, you would, you would, God is getting ready to take care of Solomon and Gomorrah. And because he knew what he was getting ready to do, he said to himself, should I hide, should I hide what I'm getting ready to do from my friend, from my, from my, from Abraham? It's a, it's a phenomenal statement, guys. This is a phenomenal statement from the creator of the universe. And many people read it and, and read it very slightly, if you will. But if you think about it, it's a tremendous statement. And he goes on, not just to make the statement, but to explain why that he made the statement. To, 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 to display, if you will, to speak of, if you will, the character 
of this man who he considered his friend, Abraham. And let's start there. We are in Genesis 18 and 17. And Jehovah said, Will I hide from Abraham what I do, or what I'm going to do? Since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him. And last time I read this, I, I alluded to the, to the truth that how awesome that, that line right there, that's, that's a whole nother teaching. Right? That's a, how all the nations of the earth. And remember, whenever me, for me, whenever you're hearing me, whenever you listen to me and I, then I talk about words, right? Especially nations. The word nation is dealing with people, humanity, human beings. That's what that word implies. Not nations as in as in America and in in Germany and England and in in, in in Russia. No, 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 not nations like that. Nations like people. So if you wanna if you wanna just sideswipe the word nations and and put people in, since Abraham will surely become a mighty people, or a mighty person, and all the people of the earth will be blessed in him or through him or by him. Or from here, it doesn't matter what what you put in there. It's it's the the people of the earth is going to be blessed because of him, right? And I'm throwing a little hint for you, this is alluding to the Messiah, the Messiah who 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 came, who comes to. Take away the sins of the world, the sins of the people, the sins of humanity. The, the whole world, all the people in the world, billions and billions of people, eight point something billion of people that is in the world today because of <laughs> one man. Okay? Verse 19, for I have known him to the end that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep God, protect, do the way of Jehovah. That, listen, people, this this man, this person, Abraham, Yehovah, is sure that he, this man is going to teach his children, is going to command them, not just teach them, but is going to institute this teaching in such a way. Listen, this is the way to go. Follow it. I'm telling you, if you want to live, if you want to be blessed, this is the way to go. What way? The way of Yehovah. Be obedient. Be honorable, live uprightly before him. Not just in the way you think uprightly is, but in the way he deemed upright to be. Not just his children, but his household. Okay? And at the time, Abraham didn't have any children per se. Because as we read in 17 and, and just verses before this, that God had promised Abraham that he's going to be a, a father. Right? The promise has not yet come to pass, but he was going to be a father nonetheless. And Abraham, God knew that Abraham would teach this son that he was going to give him. And his other sons that was going to come out of his loins 
and not just his sons coming out of his loins, but his household. So his household uh, in, entailed his servants, his wife, uh, all his servants, the people who took care of his animals, because he had a lot of animals and so on. All the people who took uh, every that's his household. Perhaps even his neighbors and his community because of the way people looked at him. It said, Israel is not just a person, it's a people, it's a, it's a character, it's a personality, it's a mindset, it's a hard thing. It's a, it's a, that's what it all entails. It's not a skin color. It is not a skin color. Okay, because we have many peoples with all kinds of skin color. And a lot of those people act like the bad person. And a lot of people try to live upright in every aspect of skin color you could think of. So you keep holding on to this idea that it's, it's about your skin color. No, 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 no. It's not about that. It's not about that. It's character. What did Martin Luther King say? About his dream? About recognizing people, not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. No, 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 no. That's a God statement right there. That's a Ye Jehovah statement right there. That you look at people, that you hold them up, based on the content of their character, not by the color of their skin. That's who Abraham represents. That's, that's what God is talking about here in verse 19, in, in Genesis 18. That he would command his children and his household after him that they may keep the way of Jehovah. What's the way of Jehovah? To do righteousness and justice. And not just righteous, righteousness and justice, but that right there is saying a mouthful. To do right and to be just. To the end, to the extent that you all will have no other choice but to bring to Abraham that which he had spoken to him about. Bring to pass this promise because he knew what this man would do. He knew the character of this man. Does God know our character like that? Does he, is he familiar with your character like this? Is he familiar with my character like that? Okay, so character is character, name. It's 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 equate. That's character is equated to name. Things in the book of Proverbs it says that a good name is better to have than rubies and diamonds and pearls and many riches. A good name. It's better you have a good name, a good character. It's better that the name you have is known because of its character, of its good character, that is, than you have money and wealth and power and all kinds of stuff. Because that's what you'll be judged on. The content of your character. Not how much money you have. Not how much influence you have. Amen. So that was Abraham. Let's let's so we talk about Jacob's character, right? We talk about the fact that yes, he was called heel catcher. It's because of what he was doing while he was being born. So that was that's what they saw. Oh, let's call him heel catcher. And we talked about the fact that that word, that name has, 
you know, varying connotations, right? And many people attach the stigmatism of the negative connotations to Jacob. But that was not his character. His character was further developed in, in, this, in the same passage in Genesis, in this, the same chapter talking about his birth, when it talks about Esau was a skilled hunter, it talks about Jacob was a quiet man or a plain man living in tents. And we, we, we went over that. I don't want to go over that again. I want to go into the, the character of the other guy, the other person, the one who was disobedient to his parents, the one who overheard his parents telling Jacob, I don't want you marrying none of these women from this Canaanite land. <laughs> I want you to go to my family over there, right, by Laban, and get married to one of their girls over there. One of the good girls. Don't get married to one of these over here. Oh, and Esau heard that. And what did he do? Oh, okay. I see that. I see what you're doing. I'm, on, I'm doing the opposite. And he went to Ishmael. Ishmael, the same kind of character. Ishmael, Esau, similar personalities, similar characters, similar mindsets. Okay, they they were a law unto themselves. They were a, they were a law unto themselves. Don't take my word for it. Go read the story. Go read the narratives, and you'll see. So we're gonna let's look at his character. Genesis. Let's go Genesis uh, twenty-seven, maybe. Let's see if it's 27. I'm looking at my notes here. Nope, not 27. No. I just talked about it. 28, right? 28 and 6. Now we saw so that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan and Aram to take a wife from there. And that as he blessed him, he gave him a command saying, you shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. What did Jacob do? He didn't take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. He went as he was told, as he was instructed and did what his parents asked him to do. What the other one did? What the other one did? <laughs> Looking at Ishmael. What the other one did? Esau went to Ishmael and took, in addition to the wives that he had, okay, he had wives, oh boy, okay, let me go get some more. Mahala, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaoth, his wife. Okay, and again, in that uh, 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 chapter, we read further down the encounters of Jacob and the angel, and he saw the angels going up and down and so on and so on and so on. Let's go on. Let's move on. All right. Uh, I think it's in, I think it's, it's Genesis. Let's go Genesis uh, 35. Let's go Genesis 35. We talked last week, we talked about that in part five. We talked about this character, Jacob, when God spoke, spoke to him and told him, Arise, go to Bethel. What did Jacob do? He immediately told his household, Get them, get them, <laughs> them gods you all have, them gods you all made, <laughs> them gods you all made with your hands. Give me all them idols. Come on, bring them. We, we gotta, we gotta put them away. We gotta clean up ourselves. We gotta take a bath, change our clothes. We gotta prepare ourselves to go do this thing, to go have this encounter with the, the creator of the universe. And what did, what did they do? They did it. They, they brought the, the gods and stuff and they give it to him. Right? And that was the second, this, this chapter was the second time that 
God reiterated that your name is now no longer Jacob, it is Israel. That your name is no longer Jacob, it is now Israel. Okay, and when you read that narrative, you see that the blessing that God gave to Abraham is the same blessing he gave to Isaac, and thereby the same blessing he gave to Jacob. Okay, let's go. Oh, we're going to the we're going to the other guy, Esau. Genesis thirty six. Let's read. Genesis thirty six and one. I'll give you a minute to go there. We have to understand this in 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 the context of what is written in the narrative. Okay, we have to understand that this is not this is not just. A Telling a story. This is what this is not just telling a story. And you, you could read it as it's a story because it kind of is a story. But this is not just telling a story. This is God giving us insight into a lot of things. One, the kind of people he's looking for. Who, who is Israel? Who is the character of Israel? What is the character of Israel? Right? Uh, in another uh, teaching that I have in mind to do, I want to do, it's called, What is Man? <laughs> Again, and, and I'm right now I'm tussling up with the idea of, should it be what is man or should it be who is man? <laughs> and it's based on what David the prophet said. What is man that your mind is full of him? What, who, who, who is this thing that you created, that you call man, mankind, right? But that's another topic for another day. But we're dealing with the same principle about who is Israel? What is Israel? This, 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 you know, this 12 sons and everything is Israel, 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 Israel. What, what is the, what is the, what is all that about? And what I've been saying to you all this time is, it's about character. Even Yeshua, which we're going to go into in the gospel, he said these words. I have come not except, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Huh? I have come not except. For the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. Wait. He come to die for the world in that verse, John 3.16. But in the other verse he said, I have come not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It sounds... Two, like two upper, you die for the whole world, but you only come for those of Israel? <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. He's died for the world, but he, under, he said he's, he has only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What, what is, what mean it out this? We're going to get into that. Okay, I'm going to get something to think about. But let's get into Esau, this character. Genesis 36. I'll give you enough time. You should have found it by now. Genesis 36. Now, this is the history of the generations of Esau. That is Edom. Okay, and if you read the, 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 the travesties of Esau and Edom and, and how God looks at what they did and what they have done, if you read through the, the different stories from Genesis to, to, to Revelation, if you will, if you could find them in the, in the back part of the book. But if you could, if you read the, the, the different narratives about Edom and so on in, in the Tanakh, in, in, in Genesis to Malachi, you will see God, there's, there's this, there is this thing that God has against them. And it's not them per se, but it's against people with that that kind of 
character, that kind of personality. They were on their way, the children of Israel in Exodus, right? It's just, they, they were coming out of, they, they were going through, they asked the man, the, the king of Edom, hey, we, we, we don't want anything, we're just passing through. He said, no, y'all can't come through here. He made a, you see what I'm saying? All that, we, we just want some water. No, he made a big fuss. Listen, I'm telling you, be careful how you treat God's people. You, you, listen to me. Me, listen to me. Be careful how you treat those who God is looking at and considers his people. Be careful. Because you treat them with disdain, thinking that you in the right. And you very well may, you very well might be in the wrong. Not based on your judgment, based on his. This this thing is not about me and you, it's about him. He sets the standard. And we are to live by that standard, in that standard, for that standard. Through that standard. Because of that standard. That's how we have to conduct ourselves. If we believe in this, this creator. If we believe in this person called Yehovah. If we believe in this person we call God. Many people say God. Many people call him Lord. I call him. I call him all of those things including Yehovah. Because I believe through various teachings and, and, and various uh, hearing different uh, uh, analogies or different teachings about the name. I, I, I choose Yehovah. Even the Browns Briggs, the Browns driver Briggs uh, uh, dictionary, when you see the Tetragrammaton, they, they, they in that dictionary equates that to Jehovah, they say J E H O V A H, and we know those of us who study history and and Bible and biblical literature and all that kind of stuff know the J is a modern language, probably seven seven fifty eight hundred years old, and we know Greek two eyes. E, ye is Y. Jesus, that's what. J, J, and it, J is Yeshu. Jesus. Yes, ye. Not G. J. Alright? Anyway, back to the story. Let's go. This is the history of the generations of Esau. Esau took wives, listen, of the daughters of Canaan. You heard your father speak to the person whom he blessed, whom he gave what might should have been your blessing, but because of your own irrational behavior, because of your own idiocy, because of your own stupidity, because of your own ignorance, you gave up your birthright. Nobody stole it from you. You traded your birthright for a pot of stew. Nobody didn't beat you over here and take it. You gave it up. You even say, what is that? I'm fitting to die. I'm ready to die. That's what you said, Esau. Make, and I said, you know, you, you made a mountain out of a molehill. Come on, man, you wasn't, you wasn't that bad. Yeah, you was tired, okay, but you wasn't that bad that you would die. Again, death and life is in the power of the tongue and those who live by it. Mm. Yeah, so again, we have to remember the prophecy. Two nations, two peoples, Two characters, two personalities. Just one will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Well, guess what? You so you use your mouth, your words, and you spoke it. What is this to me? This is nothing to me. My this is my birthright. What what is that? 
what is that going to do for me now? I'm fitting to die. Out of your mouth. You brought it on your own self. And instead of looking at yourself, the point of blaming your brother. No, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I ain't falling for that. No, 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 no. No, no, Esau, no. No. The other part about the blessing, well, the blessing comes with the first, with the birth, with the birthright. So, guess what? You give up the, 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 the birthright. So, what's the big deal about the blessing? You make a big deal. You want to kill. Didn't, don't want to look at yourself. Don't want to look at your own heart. But, ooh, ready to point, ready to blame everybody else. Yeah, it's their fault. And it's his fault and it's her fault. I'm just saying, I'm dealing with character here. Heard his father and his mother. Telling the son, okay, don't marry any of these. You would think your father and your mother know what they're saying, right? You would think so. No, but instead of you humbling yourself and looking at yourself intro, intro, introspectively and looking at how, what part did you play in this whole thing and, 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 and looking for seeking wisdom from even them. Hey, Dad, what can I do now? I, you know, I, I made a big, big blunder here. I gave up my birthright for a pot of stew and, you know, what, what can I do? What can I do to, 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 not to be right in your eyes, but to, but to be right. How can I right this wrong that I had a hand in? No, we, we, no, we don't look like that. We don't think like that. We often point the finger at that person over there, this person over here, that person over yonder, that person in the other country, that person, this person, that person, that person. Okay? Watch the character of the individual. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan when he knew full well that's not what he's supposed to do. Verse 6, Esau took his wives, his sons and his daughters, and all the members of his household, and his livestock, all his animals, and all his possessions, which he had gathered in the land of Canaan, and went into a land away from his brother Jacob. Well, why, why would you go away from your brother Jacob? Your brother Jacob... Through his mom, got the blessing, honoring the prophecy of God. Okay, don't forget that. Don't forget it. So let's not point fingers. Let's let's take the narrative for what it is. Was it right? No. But nonetheless, God allowed it to take place. Why? Why did he allow it? For a variety of reasons. One, he saw the spices boat, right? He didn't care. If he didn't care about the boat, right? He didn't care about the blessing, right? And God alone knows what he would have done if he had the boat, right? And the blessing. Look at look his, look his character. He, he probably would have given it to, he might have given it away to somebody else who, who's not even of this kind of character. Somebody completely opposite to, you have no clue. We have no clue. I have no clue. But God knows. God knew. So what? Well, God allowed it to play out. Because I not spoke a prophecy. The older will serve the younger. So instead of, and we saw Jacob go to Laban. We, we, we know all about his life over there. How he... He married, he, 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 he was promised a wife. Um, if he worked seven years, after the seven years was over, he, he got, uh, I don't know how that's, that's a different story. That's a whole different thing. How you, you, you get a wife and, you know, you consummate the marriage and all that kind of stuff. And then you find out it's, it's not the person you, you actually wanted to marry somebody. 
That's a whole nother story. But we all know about that. And he had to work another seven years for the other wife, for Rachel and Leah. And we, we all we know about that. And then we knew that God spoke to him. God said, move on to Laban's house and go back to your family or go back to, to the land where uh, uh, Jacob, where is Esau was. And so he, he obeyed again. This, this, this constant obedience, you know, he could have been mad at Laban and be like, I'm done. I ain't working no more. I don't want, you know, he could have put away Leah and, and go about his business. He could have make a bigger noise, if you will. He didn't. He didn't. Like, okay, I don't, don't ask. Please, I can't explain it. Can you? Instead, he, he said, okay, I'll walk another seven years. For the woman that he actually wanted. And he, he walked the next seven years. He got the woman he wanted. And we know that part of the story also. Okay. So he moves out to Laban. He, he, going back to his. He knew. How they, they had separated. How they had parted ways. And he's concerned. He knew that his brother would, would, wanted to kill him. He, he knew all of that. All these years passed. He's coming back, so he's concerned. We knew he made all these preparations on his way, meeting, and he said it. I, I listen. I don't want. I don't want to fight with you, brother. I'm looking for grace. I'm looking for favor. I'm looking for peace with you. So I'm sending all these gifts. I'm sending all everything. You know, let you know. Hey, I, I just want peace. Let me find favor in your sight. Even call him Lord. And they made up. He saw at the time didn't look like he was upset. He was pleased. They hugged. They cried. They talked. The relationship didn't really seemingly didn't. There was no, no, not like a rebonding, kind of like a real brotherhood, how brothers supposed to be. But remember, the prophecy was two nations. Okay. Two peoples again. How can two walk to, uh, together unless they agree? Unless they meet and and converse and had a conversation and had a dialogue and, and develop this conversation and build this relationship and realize, hey, we, we are we are family, we're brothers, let's let's set aside our petty differences, let's push on. Because we're brothers, we blood, we blood brothers. No, oftentimes it's not like that. Oftentimes we meet, we talk for a little while. Okay, man, you know what? You go your way, I go my way. You know, it's it's, it's all good. But still, you know, there's no coming together. There's still that big separation. Okay, and often it's because of personality, perception, character. Person, right? All these things prevent those things. You know, husband and wives get divorced because what? Irreconcilable differences because we're so different. We we we, we can't see eye to eye. We 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 keep clashing and and bashing and and contrasting. It's because there's there's no give in either one of us. So <laughs> the only give. That is, that's there is to give up. Let's just, let's just give up on each other and go separate ways. And sometimes that's inevitable. Sometimes, you know, how did Yeshua say? It's because of the hardness of our hearts. It's because, not, not that we can't do it because our hearts are so hard. Our hearts are so hard. My heart is so hard. Your heart is so hard that there's, there, we, we can't, and just meet and flow. We we meet and we butt heads and, and we just have to part because we're gonna kill each other. Or we, we're just gonna create chaos. Unfortunately, that's that's how it is. That's how it is sometimes. You know. Again, we 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 are speaking to character. We are speaking to character. 
And Esau took all he had and his wives and everything and moved away from Jacob. Right? In verse 7, in 36 and verse 7, gives you a little hint as to the reason why. Okay, it may not be because of their character. For their substance was too great for them to dwell together. Mm. Didn't that happen with uh, two people further back in Genesis? Two people, one person who God called and, and the other person who the person who God called decided to come, you know, you I need you, you need me. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Abraham and Lot. Okay. But again, personality speaks over volumes over substance physical substances right F over personality speaks over, way over that what am i saying what do i mean if two people have the right personality the, th the things are not going to affect them how they how they work together how they come together how they how they collaborate things are not going to get in the way because their focus is not on things their focus is on is on relationship each other and that 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 kind of thing and most times it's the other way around most times it's things get in the way of personality and character one person thinks, uh, you know, you might try to rob me because I have this much and you have that much. And I'm telling you, boy, <laughs> money, <laughs> what is it? Money is the root. Money and wealth and all those things is the root. Oh, boy. Mm. And Esau, verse 8, and Esau lived in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. Verse 9 gives us a history of the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. Right? Um, so it's important for us to understand this. Brothers and sisters out there. It's important for us to understand that character is so important. Character is so important that without character, you 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 could be a no no, a no go. Right? Without character. Without without an a, a, a perception or a mentality to do right, do the right things the right way. Without that perception, without that mentality. It's, it's nothing is important without that. It might seem important to you and the people around you, but without that principle, you get nowhere, or you'll end up nowhere. You you might in the interim you might be something, you might get some place, you might have things, but the end. What did Yeshua say? Don't store up things that will accumulate rust and dust. <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about. So with that, let's 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 go. Remember I said before, what did Yeshua say? Right? Yeshua talks about same kind of thing 
Yeshua talks about the same kind of thing. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. We talked about the character of Jacob. We talked about the character of Esau. And we, we, we made the analogies of these two characters. All right? And we established the truth that Jehovah is more intent on looking for people of a caliber people of a certain character, okay? Certain personality traits and so on and so on and so on. It had nothing to do with your skin color, bro. It had nothing to do with your neighbor's skin color. It had nothing to do with none of that, those things that many people today raise up, point the fingers at and say, you don't want to go into that. I'm not going to go into that. But you know, because you're living in the world, so you know what is said. I'm, I'm dealing with truth from the perception of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jehovah. And you might think you're justified in an action. And again, let me re reiterate that what did God say in Proverbs? If your ways, if your ways, if a man's ways, if a girl's ways, if a person's ways, please, Yehovah, he, Yehovah, would make even his enemies be at peace with him. That's a powerful statement. I hope you can hear. Let him, let he who have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Matthew chapter 10 verse, if, let's roll back, verse 5. And Yeshua sent these 12 out, his 12 disciples, and commanded them saying, do not go among the nations or do not go among the Gentiles or do not go among peoples of a certain character. And you could tell peoples of a certain character because peoples of a certain character, they flock together, right? Ergo the saying, birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. So he's saying, don't go to the, the nations, the Gentiles, the peoples, and don't enter into any city of the Samaritans. Okay? We're not focusing on those two things right now. This is where we're going to focus. Rather, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And many people will say, well, well, because you sure know that he was going to send Paul, the apostle, and he was going to be the apostle to the... That's a, that's, a, that's a way to think about it. That's one way to, to look at it. But I'm saying... That's, that's not what I believe it is. Not according to John 3.16. No. No, that's not what it is at all. We're dealing with, we're dealing with a character here. In another place, let's do, we talk about the woman. Right? Asking for the crumbs off the table. He said, it's, no, it's not my place to take the children's bread. Okay? The children's bread, give it to the dogs. Who children? You think you talk, what children is he talking about? What children is he talking about? God's children. He's talking about the people of this character. 
Again, remember, we already established when God speaks, he speaks in parables. His prophets oftentimes spoke in parables, okay? And he even said in, in, in a certain place, when it, was coming, when it came to Moses, he didn't speak to Moses in parables. He spoke to Moses face to face. Everybody else, he spoke to them in visions and in parables and so on. So that all the stuff we read in the prophetic books, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all those, Malachi and, and Hosea and them, is, is you, you have to figure out what in the world are they saying? If you don't have a concept of what they're saying, I guess chances are you will misperceive what they're saying. It's the same thing here with Yeshua. We read in the, 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 the part in Matthew, I think it was in 13, when the disciples asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? Wait a minute, come on. We, we, we're following you. And we hear you teaching and you're talking to them in parables. But when it comes to us, you're speaking to us plainly, openly, just no, no, no fancy stuff. You, you're telling us like it is. Why do you do that? And what did he say? It is given to you to know the mysteries. Who are you? Okay, who are you? You are the twelve. Whom? But but he's when he say you, who is he referring to? Just the twelve? No, not just the twelve. Go into the gospels and read every every narrative where he called the twelve. Every narrative where he spoke to each one of the twelve. And call them. When he met them and said, come follow me. Go read the narrative. And see if you don't see this same line. They never ask, where are we going? Who are we going to? They never ask no question. He said, follow me. And they just, Matthew the tax collector. Come follow me. He just got up, left all his thing. just got up and left. Peter got up and left. John got up and left. James got up and left. They all just got up and left. Not one question was asked. Where are we going? What are we going to do? Who are you? None of that stuff. Even Judas And he said to them, it is given to you. Well, what are you? Is that, are we talking about the 12? No, 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 no. We're talking about people who will just hear and do. People of that character, they will just hear the word and do. James, what did James say? Don't be a hearer only. But be a doer also. You can hear all you want. If you don't do, you're not one of them. You're not one of the you. It is given to you. No, because all you're doing is hearing. Remember the man in the book of Acts? What, what did he, it was Peter or Paul he told them. He said, man, you almost, you almost had me. You almost convinced me. You almost did. In other words, he was sitting down there listening to the conversation. He was, and Peter or Paul, whoever it was, I can't remember off the top of my head. They were preaching, man. And they were preaching good too. You know, power and all that stuff. And he was listening, he was listening, he was listening. It's like, hmm. And then he said, you almost convinced me. Almost. He wasn't willing to do nothing. He wasn't willing to do anything with what he was hearing. He said, rather go to the lost sheep of the house of, the house of Israel. Matthew 10 and 6. As you go, proclaim saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Freely you receive, so freely you give. Don't take any gold or silver or brass in your money belts. Wow, this right here. Oh, man. Take no bag for your journey, neither two coats, nor sandals, nor staff, for the laborer is worthy of his food. Mm, mm. This could preach right here. This could preach right here. In today's society, this right here, hmm. Mm, 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 mm. I want to know how many people, how many of us really read this and believe it? In verse 11, into whatever city or village you enter, find out who is in it, who in it is worthy and stay there until you go on. As you enter into the household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it isn't worthy, let your peace return to you. Whoever doesn't receive you, nor hear your words, as you go out of the house or that city, shake the dust of your feet. Most certainly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of of judgment for that city. Hmm. Should I keep reading? Behold, I send you out as sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as wise as serpents, but as harmless as a dove. Uh, and I'll stop right there for this one. Be as wise as a serpent, but be as harmless as a dove. He and he sent them, don't go any and everywhere. No, no, no. Go, to, go look for a certain, those who are worthy. Those who are, those who are worthy. Matthew 15. Just saying, people. Matthew 15 and 22. Behold, a Canaanite woman came out from those borders and cried, saying, have mercy on me, Lord, you son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he answered her not a word. His disciples came and begged him saying, send her away for she cries after us. But he answered, I was not sent to anyone but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Again, we are speaking to character. Okay? We are speaking to a certain character individual. And here, the narrative explicitly says this woman is a Canaanite woman who the children of Israel didn't have no right to marry to get married to. And she cried out to him and she called, Yeshua, son of David, have mercy. I'm seeking favor from you. I know who you are. My daughter is, my, she's not even asking for her own self. She's asking on behalf of her daughter. Speaks a little bit of character. Okay. Speaks a little bit of character. But he didn't answer her a word. Didn't, didn't say anything. I wonder why. I wonder why. 
But the disciples understood. The children of Israel, we have, no, we don't deal with the people in the, of the land, right? We don't deal with them kind of people. No, them kind of no, 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 no. We don't deal with them kind of people. Understand what I'm saying to you this evening, this night, this morning, whenever you're hearing me, whenever you listen to this. And they beg them, send her away. Come on, man. Just tell her, go home. Go back to Canaan. Go back to your house. We don't deal with you Canaanite people. Listen to the heart of God. He answered, I wasn't sent to anyone except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, of the house of that character that's going to persist after God. The character that's going to insist after God. The character that's going to wrestle and let God eventually prevail in their lives. The character who persists after righteousness. The character who insists on being upright and being just. Having mercy and, 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 and all these characters. All these upright things about them. Let's read verse 25. Verse 25 declares, But she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. The disciples are saying, send her away. He is saying, I have not come except to the lost Sheep of the house of Israel, send her away. The disciple wanted to go away. She hearing all of that, it ain't listen. She ain't budging. Remind you of other people, Zacchaeus, the woman with the issue of blood, the woman by the pool, the man by the pool. Remind you of people, the woman we just talked about with the dogs. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the masses. You know. It's a certain character. This is what it is. She didn't hear none of what they said. She came and worshipped him. Saying, Lord, help me. But he answered. <laughs> it's the same woman, right? It is... Oh God, come on. He, he is not... First, he didn't say another. He didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. Now he's saying it is not appropriate to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. No, he called it her dog. Okay. I wouldn't say verbatim a dog, but the, the idea is you, 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 you know, a stray. She's a stray, doesn't know where she belongs. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a dog mentality. You'll eat from anybody, do anything. You know, a dog is an, is an animalistic figure, right? He, he, I'm not sure, did he say to her she is a dog? It's kind of hard. If that's what the narrative calls her, maybe that's what he said. Maybe he said it in a different way, and this is just English translation. It's the same one we was talking about. Verse 27. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dog eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. So, 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 so. The woman is from Cain. Here, let's listen to all the things she has going against her. She's from Canaan. No Israelite is supposed to marry a woman from Canaan. Okay? We, we have no idea of the character of this woman except she recognizes who this person is that she's talking to. Something in her, whether she heard about him from people that talk in the village or whatever, we don't know. But she certainly reckoned, she's certainly calling him 
or calling on him like she is aware of who he is. Right? She's not asking for her own self. Her issue is her daughter is ill. A child that she gave birth to. Her daughter is ill. And seriously, from what the narrative says. And she wants a remedy. A, no, no human being that exists in this world who has given birth to a child wants to see the child sick and just leave the child. Yes, I don't care. If, I don't care. I mean, if, if you if you in that position, that's a <laughs> man. That's a sad story. I don't believe it's I don't believe it's in a woman to feel like that to her own child. That might be wrong. I, I just it's 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 beyond believable, really. Right. So she's crying out to this man who she calls Lord, who she identifies as the son of David on behalf of her daughter. The disciples are telling him, send her away. He's not answering in the beginning. He ain't saying a word. They're saying, send her away. Then he said, I'm... I'm only people I'm interested in is the children of Israel. That's the only people I'm interested in. Really? Well, she gonna show him who the children of Israel is. She gonna really show him. She came and she worshipped, crying out to him, Lord, help me. He answered in a derogatory kind of a sort of way. I'd say it's derogatory, right? This song is bad. That didn't bother her because her mindset, her heart, her she was fully committed to what she wanted and what she wanted to do. She was searching for God with all her heart, with all her soul, with all her mind and with all her strength. And regardless of what was happening in her in her eyesight and in her hearing, it didn't sway her one way, either to the right or to the left. She persisted. And verse 28 comes the remarkable response. Remarkable because of what the narrative said, but I'm sure internally he's saying to himself, this is what I'm talking about. This is a daughter of Israel. This is the character. This is who I'm here for. Somebody who wants me with everything they have. Somebody who's willing to just set aside everything that they hear and see and know and come after me. This is the, a child of Israel. She said, he says in verse 28, then Yeshua answered her, woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you even as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very same hour. Ladies and gentlemen, when I, when I say to you, That I am convinced by every measure you could measure convincing that God is not interested in your skin color. God is not interested in your 
level in society, whether you're a king or a prince or a president or a farmer or a peasant or homeless or any position that you may have. That's not what he's looking at. God looks at your heart. You don't have to take my word for it. It's written everywhere in the book. From Genesis to Revelation. He looks at your heart. And it's by your heart. He draws upon you. It's by your heart. He drives. With you or in you. Or for you. It is by your heart. Doesn't matter what complexion you are. Light brown, dark brown, light skin, dark skin. Black, white, green, yellow, green. I said green already. Red, blue, purple. It's not, not even in the slightest. Because he know he created all things. He created everything. Even evil. For it's day and it's time. So why are we so insistent, insistent in listening to the naysayers who preach, the, who pull the race card and preach the race game and do all the race things and say all the race things and talk about race? I pray and I hope that in these five lessons, in these five teachings, that you yourself would be convinced that if you're a black man or woman, God is not interested at your skin color. He's looking at your heart. Where does he stand in your heart? Where have you placed him in your heart? If you're Caucasian, white, olive, if you're from the Middle East, you're from South America, wherever, whatever your skin color is, it doesn't matter to me because that's not what I'm, I don't care about that. Listen to Martin Luther. We celebrate him. We celebrate him. We honor him. Listen to what he said. That a man should be judged by the content of his character. No words spoken have been truer than those. I say those words came from the mouth of God. Through Mount Luther King's mouth. Where do you stand? Where, where is God in your Heart and in your mind, in your perception. Is he in front? Is he behind? Is he in the middle? Is he somewhere around buzzing? Where is he? Those are questions only you could answer. As for me and my house, I'm serving Jehovah. I'm going with the narrative. I'm believing what he says above what everybody else says. Including Paul, Peter, John, including the 12 apostles, including everybody who come, including the Pope. And I don't care. If they say something that he says in line with his perception and his belief and in what I think that that's what he's saying, have at it. Say it. I'm, 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 I'm gay. But if it's off, if it's presumptuous, no, I, I, I don't have to listen to that. I don't have to believe that. I don't care what your name is. I don't care who you are. But ultimately, you could only answer for you. I could only answer for me.
I can answer for you, and you cannot answer for me. My mother can answer for me. My father can answer for me. I have to answer for myself. I have to give an, an account. You have to give an account also. I'm saying, my question is, what account are you going to give? Who are you going to blame? For the way you lived your life. For what you did in life. Who are you going to blame? Amen? So with that, I want to bring to the end. I mean, there was, there was so much more I could have gone into. So much more that could have been said. Um, God's word is, is endless. It's, it's, it's infinite. It is, you can't stop. You just have to pause. You just have to. You can't really stop. You just have to end it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Any topic could go on and on and on and on and on and on infinitely. Because it's God's word. He's infinite. His word is infinite. I look forward to doing another teaching and I think it's going to be called what is man or who is man, <laughs> something like that. And I, and I hope that you would have heard enough to say, this guy has some things to say. I'm not perfect. I don't want to portray myself as being perfect. I don't want to sound perfect. I don't want to talk perfect. I don't want to articulate perfectly. Because I'm not. I just want to speak what I think God is saying to me and through me. To you. And hopefully you will hear something that will... boost your faith or draw you, push you, lean you closer to him. Amen. With that, I'll close as I usually do. I'm trying to develop this habit of closing with, with, with what, what is known as the ironic benediction. Uh, and that comes from Numbers chapter 6. Start in verse 22. And this is, this is really important. If, if, we, if we take God seriously, and if we believe what he says, for me, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's whether you believe him or not. It's, see, we, the problem is with us. We create problems. Because we overthink things and we try to articulate things and we try to make things all pretty we try to dolls things up we try to you know this whole television thing has gotten in us so much that we try to make everything look picture perfect we try to make everything song picture perfect and that's not the world we live in and for me it's you hear the narrative and, and do you believe it? Do you believe God is an unjust God? Do you believe he's a wicked God? Do you, and if you believe he's just and you believe he's right and you believe he's good and you believe he's only doing it for our benefit, then where is all the questions and all the well, why should I do this? And why should I do that? And that's legalistic and this is le where, where is Where did all that come from? James says it comes from our heart. Where do wars come from? It comes from our heart, from our heart. Think about that as we close. This is the instructions that, that Yehovah spoke to Moses 
to speak to the children of uh, uh, this Aaron and his sons. Aaron and his sons were ordained high priests forever. They were the priests forever and they were given a task. One of the tasks were, was to put Yah's name on his people. So that Yah could bless them when he see his name on them. Again, a good name is better to be had than great riches. A good name could get you great riches. Doesn't always work out that way, but it can get you good, big, great riches. So when you get great riches, don't try to hold on to the riches. <laughs> try to hold on to your good name. And so Yah, looking down and seeing his name upon his people, he blesses them. This is what is the premise of this whole ironic blessing. Amen. So let's close. Numbers 6 and 22 states, And Jehovah spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children, speak to Aaron and to his sons saying, This is how you shall bless the children of Israel. You shall tell them, Jehovah bless you and keep you. Jehovah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Jehovah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Thank you for listening. Until next time, Shalom, Yah bless, be at peace. Amen.